Great to YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. This is the first mailbag since Christmas and therefore it is quite big. I will divide it into two parts, one airs now and the other next Thursday. And I will try something new. At the end you will be asked which of the parts shown I should use for my next project. The same applies for the second part of the mailbag. I thank all of you which use my links to order stuff online. This makes these mailbags possible. The first one is not from China. It is from Amazon. This is a new microphone. We need some equipment also to produce our videos and this is my new mic and I read that this is for the moment one of the better ones it's not cheap not at all it will be mounted on my camera and because it's active it has also batteries and it works now a bigger one and this might be from Banggood Oh, this uh, had a very long journey from China to Switzerland. Took nearly two months to get to here. And it is a very simple thing. It is for so a stand for solder paste. Because I once bought a Kester. This Kester is a very well known brand in solder and I wanted to have the original so I thought I buy a device like that by the way in the background you hear sometimes my YouTube counter which counts up when one of new subscribers subscribe to my channel and here you see this is now quite handy you can take it and you can solder like that. Very nice. And it found its place here just at the alcohol and uh, if you look at this alcohol this is also a very important liquid here. <laughs> not for the guy who runs the lab. It's not uh, drinkable but I like this concept where the alcohol comes up here and you can put some paper in it and so on and like that it's closed the next one definitely is from China and it is a gift as usual what the hell is this ah now it's clear lots of LED, LED lamps and a ground plane with some icy stuff, a microprocessor and um, other things and you can imagine what this is. It is a nice LED cube. This is for my partner here in the lab he has to learn to solder and this is a perfect thing to learn to solder SMD stuff and also LEDs we should not forget this one here this is the second thing and it is a capacitive soil moisture sensor and I heard about from a colleague that if you have the normal moisture sensors like these here which work with DC they corrode very very fast they do not have any connect any connection to the soil and they should live very long these are from what I heard more or less unusable this one here does not need a Swiss army knife it's already open and it is an ESP32 V rover kit I bought this because some of the viewers asked me 
to, to check it out. It is a very expensive board and uh, has many things on it. Also lots of connections here and here. And here is the ESP32 with an SD card reader. And if we turn around, we see, ah, this is why it's quite expensive. It has also a LCD screen on it. And we will see how this works. It's about $50 or more. So I have to pay attention that I do not break it. The next one is also marked as a commercial sample and a gift which is of course not true. I, By the way, I pay for all my stuff here, so I can be honest, I do not need to pay attention what I say because this is really paid with my own money. Again, something which was requested by viewers. It is a M5 stack and this one is the battery module. Let's have a look inside. Ah, here are the battery. So, and here are the connectors. But what is this M5 stuff? I already got last week this M5 stack, the core development kit. And if we open this one here, we get this nice device with lots of connections an LCD screen, an, ins an SD card, and inside it's a ESP32. And in addition I got a prototype board for the same line. So I have now a few things and I assume if it's okay, if it works well, I will do a video about this concept. And now a very nicely packaged one. Uh -huh. USB color display test. I'm not sure if this is for testing color displays. Nicely looking. Ah, a USB meter. This is a sign we, s we know. This is reading. And uh, this is the one, the company which also produces electronic loads and stuff like that. And a lot of uh, power supplies. 5.38 volt, nothing connected of course. 21 degrees here in the lab. And here we have two buttons. Next, next, next. And here we have two buttons. And then we have something here which is different to all the USB testers I saw so far and this is a micro USB connector and I assume that this is the connector to connect the software to it. Similar to this one we have a connector here, we have a connector here and here and the small connector is here and the small micro USB connector is here. So they are somehow similar. The only big difference is this one has a a load built in and this one is just a meter without the load. So this is more versatile than this one. I assume that this has something like this plus an electronic load but minus the display. This one has no display. The next one is a small one. It is a LoRa 32U42. Ah, here it's much better. LoRa 32U42. And this is from France somewhere, obviously, BS France. And it is a LoRa module and an Atmel processor. Arduino compatible, more or less. It has no Wi Fi, so it might be that the current used by this module is quite small and I wanted to have a comparison between a old Atmel style 8-bit concept compared to our 32-bit ESP32 modules with LoRa. This by the way is one of the few modules I had to buy on eBay. Usually I do not buy on eBay here. 
in Switzerland eBay is not very big but this part I did not get on Banggood or not on Aliexpress I have no clue why maybe it's now available but for the when I ordered it it was only available on on eBay this one I got from one of my viewers and I opened it already and uh, this is a nice picture here of what's in it's Nertonic and it is a very small board here I have to search for it it is a Exxon Mini from Nertonic a very tiny computer with a huge chip here and lots of I.O. pins, a reset button and what's important a micro USB connector. So this is definitely much bigger than the, than the DigiSpark with the uh, Atmega chip. It has much more I.O. It has also a lot of memory and all these kind of things. The programming is not uh, very easy but you get a very good description with it. Uh, you have to connect this small device twice but you have uh, Arduino IDE support it is a SAMD microprocessor and it is fully supported by the Arduino IDE this Splink sketch was loaded by me so it is possible uh, to do that but you have to plug in and unplug the device twice and then it works nice little board thank you and the price is 10 pounds the next one is also a not so big one this is a USB charger a very small one but a special one and I like this concept because you don't see it here but if I connect it to mains you see something here I'm not sure if you see it very well in the camera but it has 5.04 which is the voltage and if I connect the device it shows 5 volts and oh, it's already more or less charged maybe this one here needs a little bit more current This, by the way, is a Broadlink Wi-Fi 2 infrared device and it also does not consume a lot of power but still you can see how much it consumes and I like this concept because then you immediately see you do not need to have a USB doctor or whatever to look how much current these devices uh, use I connected now an electronic load with one ampere and let's look exactly one ampere or 0.97 which is quite close for such a cheap device let's check 3 ampere even 3 ampere seems to be okay and uh, the voltage is 5.1 volts still let's check 4 ampere of course now it does not work anymore so 4 ampere is definitely too much but 3 ampere is okay the voltage is uh, too high here the voltage is okay it's 5.106 on this uh, meter and it's nearly 5.3 on this one this is the voltage is definitely wrong next one from rack I think I know what it is a nice PCB the new LoRa gateway nicely made it is a competitor to the IMST gateway and it is quite small 
and it should be possible to put it on a Raspberry Pi Zero. And I got a PCB here from Charles Allard. I met him in Amsterdam at the LoRa conference and he gave me one of these. Should fit here or I hope like that then it's very small and here I can connect the RPI Zero. So this will be a real small gateway and you will see it in one of the next videos. This is the end of part one. Please vote now for your preferred product. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!